why you're here today and what your involvement is with Comet Heritage. Oh, well, I'm here today per personally to pay tribute to a great guy, a great, great, great comedian. Uh, the late, great Tommy Cooper, um, who was a big influence in my work um, over the years. I was fortunate to uh, belong to that wonderful era of comedy, you know, like Eric and Ernie, uh, Tommy Cooper, and many more. And it was just a joy to be on the back end of it and to be able to know these people, meet these people, and be influenced by them. Is there any one particular memory that you have of a meeting with, with, with Tommy? Or, um, what's your sort of your fondest memory? Of your life? Oh, so many. I mean, he just made everybody laugh. He was the prose comedian as well as uh, the punters. I mean, the, the, you, I don't think there's any other person who could sort of walk onto a stage without opening his mouth, uh, have an audience rolling in the aisles. Uh, that was that was his comic genius. But um, I did a summer season in um, Torquay. Uh, uh, 1981 and Tommy was up at the festival theatre in Paynton and we got together for a Sunday pint one day and it was hilarious because he always walked around with a little carrier bag full of tricks uh, and, and everybody in stitches at the table and we had a beer and then Tommy said I'm just gonna nip to the loo you see and whilst he was away the barman came over and said he wanted on the phone so I walked over to the bar and I was handed a telephone from behind the bar and it was a, should have fallen or, or spotted a gag it was an old Bakelite phone and I picked it to me like this and said hello and all water squirted out of the mouthpiece and Tommy came up from behind the bar but he missed me he said, and Tommy said I missed him bastard he said I missed him he said I missed him look at that he said I was trying to get him I was I was really trying to get him I missed him <laughs> so I mean um, he was a practical joker as well but, but just great fun to be with I mean this, a, a comic giant yeah. okay. thinking about some of the sort of other people that were in that sort of era and uh, there's a lot of societies um, sort of now and uh, for, for various different comics and uh, I think one of one of the great sort of people often mention is, is Tony Hancock. Sure. What, what, how, how would you sort of sum up Tony Hancock? Well, I think in Hancock's half hour it was just sheer magic television. I and mean, when you think back that that was live television as well. I mean, there was no room for error. Um, it had to be right. Um, he was he was just uh, wonderful in the sitcom situation with, and that great combination of Sid James and other great names. Uh, it was a perfect team. It was a, you know, um, and the scripts were hilarious. Galton and Simpson they were just very funny. So much so that uh, they're being repeated today, aren't they? I mean, and you can still buy these tapes. You see, they never tire. They never age. Um, wonderful. And look at Eric and Ernie, Mark and the Wise. They're on television, endless. They keep repeating these wonderful, wonderful hours of comedy. It's uh, great. I just hope that this, the up-and-coming stars of the future will look over this work, and um, maybe Tommy's work, Tommy's tapes, uh, more and Wise, and, and try and emulate, um, not so much their in, the copy or impersonate, but try and emulate their style of comedy and their style of work, because we need, uh, it needs a revival, I think, the comedy of today, and that's one way of doing it, for sure. You've had some great people to sort of inspire you, and you've already mentioned that, that Tommy was a great influence. Mm. Can you think back to your sort of first professional night that sort of led to your your success? Can you tell us about that? Wow, gosh, my first professional. I was back in '65, um, which is what you know, 30 years ago. I mean, it's a long time, but. Um, I was with the group at the time, you know, the Black Abbots, um, so it wasn't the same as, as now. I mean, now I'm a solo performer and a solo artist. It's different. You know, I had the, the security of the band behind me at the time, and I was a drummer. So I never really gave it a lot of thought, the comedy. I was just out to be, you know, a good band drummer and, um, uh, you know, just just a, a fool with the, with the group, I suppose. Um, I never anticipated that my success would go the way it is. Um, and it just gradually went that way because I was influenced by the people um, as we've talked about, by watching them, Morecambe and Wise, when in 73 I was in the summer season in Clacton and they came to do a Sunday concert and couldn't get a seat for love and money, so I watched them from back, uh, backstage because they, uh, they were using my dressing room. And afterwards I, I went back and spoke to Eric and sat in the dressing room and had a drink with him. And, just to sit with him, I was in awe then, you know, and you learn so much by watching these people, the timing and, and everything. So it's been a, a progression over the years, really, of, of study. And a long, a long road ahead? I hope so, yeah. I'm uh, currently, uh, well, I start rehearsals next week for Fagan yes. in Oliver at the Palladium. Plug. Yeah, it's a great role, yeah, it's a great role. It's, uh, 
I've always been a fan of Dickens from school days, so I'm so looking forward to putting the old beard and the wig on and Oliver, my boy. <laughs> That's excellent. Thank you.